I'm going to be going through winter prep for my John Deere TRS 24 snowblower with Piper, my little helper today. Um, what you need is 5W30 motor oil. Um, the engine does say SAE 30, but that's for mainly above 32 degrees. Since it's a snowblower, you're going to want to use 5W30. That'll go down to, I don't know, negative 20, negative 30, way more than what you need. So what you're going to need is some sort of funnel and a drain pan, 5 8 inch wrench, and the drain plugs on the side of the engine. So we're going to start just by draining the oil. We'll loosen it up with the plug. I'm going to hopefully the oil into the funnel and into the drain pan. Should only have to change it once a year. Uh, drop the plug in there so it's going to be filled with oil. I don't know if that'll matter. Loosen up the cap. So far, so good. So it's pretty dark. I just use regular cheap oil and change it once a year. I'm sure you could go longer if you put synthetic oil in, but it's pretty cheap. I think I only use like a half quart, three quarters of a quart. So, um, not going to be changing out the spark plug this year or the fuel filter as I just completely refurbished, repainted pretty much the whole thing last winter or before last winter. So, this engine is from 1995, so it looks pretty good for 22 years now going on. So, a little bit of care and these things will last forever. I'm going to let this drain out for a minute, then we'll put the plug back on, and all you got to do is refill the oil carefully, just put a little bit in at a time, and then check the dipstick. I'll be back to show you that in a minute. So the oil drain took about five minutes, and I did tilt the engine a little bit this way just to get the last few drops of oil out. So I'm going to put about a quarter of this quart, maybe a little bit over, back in the engine. Make sure you put the drain plug back in first. And then I'll check the oil level after it sits for a few minutes. I'm going to do the next part of the lube. I'll look up the specs and I'll put the full capacity in the description. I don't know, I'm gonna put 100 or so milliliters in there of the quart. It's gonna be low, but I'm gonna check it a few times. So let that sit. I did run out the gas, put a little bit of stable in there and ran it through until it was dry um, before winter. So I'm gonna fill it up with gas. Good idea with small engines. I don't put any ethanol in my small engines, so you might have to put, if you were operating in really cold situations, you might want to put some sort of fuel stabilizer in there, but I don't put ethanol in because with small engines, they don't take to the ethanol very well at all. So you're going to want to stay away from that if you want your engine to run for a long time. It's a few pennies more but well worth it. So that's full. You'll have to go through the fuel filter a little bit, but it'll be good enough for the first time I, it snows here in Wisconsin. But yeah, non-ethanol fuel is well worth it. And if you run small engines like I do for the year, it'll maybe cost you five dollars more in fuel, but with headaches it saves you and be well worth it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is grease, put a couple shots of, or a shot of grease in each of the augers. There are grease fittings, one here and one here. I have some just some Lucas Oil Red and Tacky, some pretty good stuff. Just put it on there. Don't need to go overkill on it. Let's see. There's one. I'll just do one more hit. Oh, half a hit and then it's starting to come out. So. This gearbox, we filled it up, sealed it last year. If yours is 20 years old like mine, then I'd recommend 
changing the gearbox oil. Um, don't have the oil on me, but I'll try to put a link to the manual on that, the service manual for this in the description as well. That is very handy for all this stuff. So two grease points here. Just kind of watch, you can see it start to come out and then you know you got enough that's good enough for the year. When you're also looking for winter prep, you want to make sure that you actually have shear pins in here. Uh, they don't, if you don't know what a shear pin is, you're going to want to look it up, but when I bought this thing, they'd have bolts through there. So what the shear pin does is if you hit a huge rock or something like that and it jams it up, instead of breaking the rest of the gearbox, basically it is a bolt that's relatively weak is what a shear pin is. It'll break right off and then the auger won't spin. So it won't damage the rest of the lawnmower. It's basically to save you from having to repair or pay for major repairs. So make sure you get those. I found it was cheaper from my local John dealer dealership than on eBay and stuff like that. Ended up being like half price. So I just bought three or four of them. So I'm good enough for a few years. Haven't had to use one yet, but if you hit something, you'll be glad that you have a shear pin in there versus a bolt. So that's about all you got for this. This is lubricated here. So while oil settling yet, I'm going to lubricate the rest of the moving points with some tri-flow. Do not use WD-40 as that's more of a solvent than a lubricant, so that can actually hurt you in the long run. So I'm going to go through a few, all the movement spots, just put a little dab of oil on there. I've had pretty good luck with tri-flow, I haven't had any issues, but so I'm just going to go a little bit at each of these pivot points. Hopefully I can get this to last me. I don't need any there. Get this long snowblower to last me another 20 years. It's not much to it, a lot less plastic than anything new nowadays, so the beauty of it. So just get all the joints, stuff like that, and you'll be good to go. So the only thing else to do is to start it up in a second. I'll try that out. I've never used the electric start on this one, so I'll give that a shot. Should start up no problem. I just lubricated all the handles up here. Put a little bit of lube on these movement points. Probably doesn't need it, but it doesn't really hurt. Some hinge. Should only have to do this once per season. So once you're done moving it, you will want to activate everything, move it back and forth a little bit. Just to make sure that it gets into all the nooks and crannies. Should be pretty good for all the moving stuff. Obviously you can go underneath it, but I lubed that up last year when I refurbished it. So that's basically all the maintenance I'm gonna do this year for this. Next year I'm gonna change the spark plug again. So to check the oil, it should be pretty straightforward. All you wanna do is grab a clean paper towel or rig, wipe this off. There's a full level and an add level, and then it says okay. Put it in there, pull it out. I'm not even on the dipstick yet, so you keep checking and refilling until you have oil in there, and then we'll be ready to start. Start it. So I ended up using just over a pint. Um, I'll put the full amount in the description and maybe take on the video of what I use. So now I'm going to pull it outside and see how it starts. Turn the coat to full. Turn it to bunny, push to prime. I'm just gonna watch the fuel filter, make sure that it's pulling in fuel. There. 
there it goes. So it's pretty empty, otherwise you only primed it like two or three times and you're, you're good. So now that there's fuel up there, I was going to use this, but it should be easy enough to start with this. Runs pretty well. Um, when I got it, the carburetor is all clogged up. Wouldn't run unless you had it on full choke and it's really, really finicky. Once it's warmed up, I think it'll run a little bit better when you turn it on the low speed. But typically, if you run it wide open when you're plowing snow or snow blowing. So, thank you for watching. If this helped you out, give a thumbs up in the video. Um, subscribe if you want to see more videos. Um, if you have any questions about the snow blower, let me know. I did have it completely pretty much completely torn apart had to put back together so thanks for watching